never, but never, can sexual exploitation and abuse be subject to immunity. That's the first step. The second step flows logically. Once the immunity is removed from non-military personnel, then the military will be under tremendous pressure to expunge sexual exploitation and abuse from their ranks. When you say peacekeeping, it means that you are to come and lay the foundation of peace, not only military peace, but peace in people themselves. These are women and children who have been brutalized by war. And these are people who are eager exactly to find from who represent the so-called international community the support to say, it's okay. Now we are going to start anew. So there's a, a sense of a culture of silence out there, a culture nearly of impunity that's within the construct of many of the contingents because there's been no really effective means by holding people accountable and in fact prosecuting them in a timely fashion and in so doing permitting uh, those who are uh, in authority to influence their own command, to impose discipline and to impose legal action against people who commit crimes. And so removing the impunity uh, from the civilian side is probably the most innovative idea I have heard in the longest time. When the UN becomes the protectors of predators instead of the prosecutors of predators, that destroys me because I believe in the UN and I believe in the power of the UN to make change. So one of the reasons I'm here is to say how can we help the Secretary General and all of those really good people in the system, because there are good people in the system who have been trying to fight this and who have found themselves stopped by processes and bureaucracies that actually make them unable to carry out the changes that they need to carry out, that make them unable to hold accountable military and non-military peacekeepers. Transparency, I think, is the key word here. We need to be open about how many such cases are there of sexual abuse and exploitation, which countries are uh, involved in it, what they are doing, and how the cases now being sent by the UN to them are being handled. I come from Bangladesh, the largest troop contributing country for the UN peacekeeping missions. And I can say, that Bangladesh will welcome very much setting the standards high, keeping the good name of the United Nations, and make them, that will make them proud to serve the United Nations. They don't want the Bangladesh troops or Bangladesh people of Bangladesh would not want to be associated with an endeavor which is accused of sexual exploitation and abuse. We need to end the immunity immediately, eliminate the application of immunity and, and the, even the presumption of immunity in cases of sexual exploitation and abuse. And we will also, we're also calling for this commission of inquiry because so far, for the many, many years when immunity has been misapplied in this way, the, the UN has gotten into terrible habits. Successive uh, officials within the United Nations have built up a sort of racket around the protection of immunity and the protection of the United Nations, not from sexual exploitation and abuse, but for the, the damage to their reputation when it's revealed that staff and others are committing sexual exploitation and abuse and getting away with it. <laughs>